since I was born, I was born in a world where everything was so complicated. There was always something wrong with me. Like within my family, my dad didn't really approve that I was that his first child was a girl. He didn't like that. He didn't approve that my mom was out there and hanging out with people. He just wanted to make her stay at home, like raise her children. So it, that, that didn't make sense. And police corruption wasn't one of the main things that we faced at home because my dad was a policeman, so he could get away with anything. And he was really violent, you know, like it didn't feel, it didn't feel safe at home to be at home because he would always come drunk, hurt my mom, or hurt us emotionally. Then I come into this country and people don't want to be my friend because I don't speak English very well or because I'm Mexican. And that doesn't make sense either. I don't want to go back to Mexico, mainly for my family. Only a small portion of my family is here in, in, in the United States. But my grandma is back in Mexico. My aunt is back in Mexico. Everybody else is back in Mexico. I miss the food. I miss the people. I miss the holidays that over there are such a big deal that here in the United States they don't even know about. Like Posada is here. Nobody, nobody knows what a Posada is. It's a Christmas holiday. We meet in this one big house, this one, this one house that the community selected, and we throw a big party. And there is a lot of traditional food. We're celebrating Christmas. We're um, we're hitting piñatas. You know, we're talking to each other. We're dancing. It's really, really beautiful. Well, at first, just the whole idea of coming here to the United States it was really scary because I was 10 years old, my sister was 9, and my brother was 7. So I was more, mostly worried about them. The first step was getting an adult to get us all the way to the northern part of Mexico. And we were able to convince my dad. He took us to the northern part of Mexico. We went on a bus, and that trip wasn't so harsh because we were still in Mexican territory. But then once we got to the northern part of Mexico, uh, he handed us to two ladies that we didn't know. So we didn't know them. They took us by car to the river, the bridge where they were checking papers and see if you were allowed to come into the United States was right there. It was like, we could look at it. We could see their faces clearly. Before we got on the boat, they handed us to, another, to two guys that we didn't know. And they were in charge of getting us through the river. And we got on a boat, we went through the river, across the river, and then we got off and they told us to change quickly and to leave the clothes there. So we left them there. And we walked for a few minutes and another couple met with us and this was a married couple. They took us to their house and we stayed with them for two nights and three days. And they took us to Houston, Texas. And once we got there, um, we met with my uncle and my aunt who drove us here to DC. And the whole process of getting on the bus to the northern part of Mexico up until we went, we got, we came here to DC, took about probably a week and a half, something like that. I think we have all heard it so many times, the American dream. You cross the border or you come to this country and you expect life to be amazing, or at least that's the idea that we have. But you come here and the U.S. just keeps on throwing all of these obstacles at you. Who is this American dream for, you know? Is it actually for us? Just by looking at the history of America, they just love to put people of color down and they love to empower white Americans. So for me, the, thing, the one thing, the one title that empowers me the most is being Mexican. I'm just a Mexican girl living here in America, <laughs> learning English, fighting for her dreams. I'm undocumented, yes, but I'm also unafraid. So after all of these years, and I really thank my mom for this, there are two people that I can that will always be there with me, that have always been there with me. And those are my siblings. My siblings are home. No matter where we are, as long as we're together, 
we know that we can remind ourselves of all of our experiences back home. We will have different memories that we can relive together because we were always there together. And my mom has really made that possible for us because again, she said, everybody or no one, todos or nadie. So I think that my siblings, Paula and Pedro, they're the two people that I can call home because they will always be there with me. It's like a home that you can take with you no matter where you go. I know it's a big, big deal for teenagers here in America to go and leave home when you're 18 and be free, but I don't know. That's not necessarily the idea of, that I have. Like, I always want to be close to my family. Like, in the end, everything that I'm doing is for my family. So, yeah, my, I took my family into a big consideration when I was applying to college. There is nothing like staying back at home with your family.